Soyuz 11 was a Soviet space mission that occurred in June of 1971. The crew, commanded by Soviet cosmonaut Georgi Dobrovolsky, visited the then newly launched Soyuz Soviet space station and spent several months aboard conducting experiments. On June 29th, the Soyuz space capsule entered the Earth's atmosphere and apparently landed without incident in the far Russian frontier. When recovery teams arrived on scene, all three cosmonauts were dead. It was soon determined that the hatch to the capsule malfunctioned, and during re-entry, oxygen was allowed to leak out into space, suffocating the crew. The disaster is unique because Soyuz 11 was the first time ever that human beings were killed being exposed to the vacuum of space. This is the story of Soyuz 11. Following the conclusion of the American space race, following Americans landing on the moon in 1969, the Soviet Union, now Russia, turned its attention to building space stations in Earth orbit. This included the first ever space station named Salyut 1. Launched on April 19, 1971, Salyut 1 measured 43 feet in length and weighed over 40,000 pounds. The station had a maximum volume of 3,500 square feet. The Salyut station carried a crew of three. On board, cosmonauts performed scientific experiments and monitored their health. Another part of the cosmonauts' mission was regular television broadcasts. The Soviet space program had hoped that their long-durant space missions would be a counter to the burgeoning American Skylab space station missions happening at the same time. Salyut missions were visited by Soyuz spacecraft to add and relieve previous crews. Soyuz 11 consisted of a crew of three, Commander Georgi Dobrovolsky, Flight Engineer Vladislav Volkov, and Research Engineer Viktor Petsayev. Soyuz 11 launched from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on June 6, 1971. Several months earlier, another Soyuz craft, Soyuz 10, failed to dock with Salyut 1. Soyuz 11 itself took over three hours to dock with the space station. Once aboard, the crew got to work performing various science experiments, exercising, and television broadcasts. The crew would spend a total of 20 days in space. During the mission, a fire developed on the space station, but it was quickly contained and extinguished. On June 29th, the Soyuz 11 crew prepared to return to Earth. As they did, a warning light on an instrument panel came on to indicate that the main hatch had not closed correctly. A crew member on the Soyuz station then attempted to talk the crew of the Soyuz to clean the hatch seal of any foreign objects that may be blocking the hatch from closing. Despite this, the indicator light remained on and the crew and ground controllers postulated that the hatch was closed and that the false alarm was likely an electrical short. Soyuz 11 began to return to Earth. This included a retrofire burn to orient the crew capsule for re-entry. Also, the Soyuz would uncouple from the Soyuz station. This included the use of pyrotechnical explosive bolts that had to fire in a sequence in order to uncouple the two spacecraft. As planned, the Soyuz capsule returned to Earth and landed in central Kazakhstan. Recovery crews then descended on the landing site to retrieve the astronauts. The recovery team expected to greet three triumphant cosmonauts, but this was not to be. When the recovery crew opened the hatch, they saw all three unconscious men still strapped in their seats. Knowing something was terribly wrong, ground crews frantically tried to revive the three men, but to no avail. Cosmonauts Dobrovolsky, Petsayev, and Volkov were all dead, and it was the second major tragedy of the Soviet space program following the death of cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov in 1967 when his Salyut 1 capsule's parachute failed to open. Investigators noticed in the autopsies of all three cosmonauts that their blood had suffered from something called asphyxia, in which the human body does not receive enough oxygen for general functions. This can cause abnormal and labored breathing. Also, the cosmonauts' blood vessels in their veins ruptured and caused massive bleeding hemorrhages in which the three men experienced bleeding in their ears and nasal cavities. This all happened a little over 15 minutes after re-entry in an altitude of 100 miles. All the crew were dead upon landing. 
Suspicion soon fell on the issue with the Soyuz 11's hatch seal. Per the design of the Soyuz system, a series of explosive bolts were supposed to fire in a controlled sequence in order to release the spacecraft. For some unknown reason, all the explosive bolts fired at the same time. The unintended motion caused Soyuz 11 to vibrate, causing the hatch door to become ajar. When this happened, the oxygen began to escape from the crew compartment. Petsayev was the closest located to the hatch valve to close the hatch and may have tried to close it, but this attempt failed. So it's 11 was the first time that human beings had perished in outer space, making it one of the most unusual deaths in human history. The Soyuz docking system was subsequently redesigned, and in time for the eventual 1973 Joint American-Soviet Apollo-Soyuz program, the world's first international space cooperation. Dubrovsky, Volkov, and Petsayev were both recognized and posthumously awarded by the Soviet government. There was a massive state funeral for all three cosmonauts, and U.S. President Richard Nixon sent his condolences. American astronaut Thomas B. Strafford traveled to Moscow to pay his respects and was a pallbearer during the funeral. Until an autopsy, it was unknown how and why the cosmonauts had died. One theory was that simply the men had died from being in space too long and simply reached and passed the maximum threshold for human beings in space. Ground controllers had lost contact with Soyuz 11 before the landing and contingency procedures were already put in place in case of a disaster. Soyuz 11 did not have pressure suits due to the lack of room inside the capsule because of the three men inside. Had Dobrovolsky, Volkov, and Petsayev had pressure suits, they likely would have survived the ordeal. Subsequent Soyuz vehicles would later only be allowed to carry just two cosmonauts and storage space for the so-called pressure suits, which would allow for both launch and landing. The bodies of the three men are buried in a cemetery on the Kremlin grounds, and Apollo 15 astronauts David R. Scott and James B. Irwin left a plaque on the moon with the names of the men and others who have died in the name of exploring space. A monument was also erected near the landing site also. Soyuz 11 is a treasure reminder on the dangerous undertaking of space travel.